Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you live from the GoHastings.com Russell Center. I hope everybody was able to check out the uh, the video discussion between Freaking A88 and GJ Mix uh, 617. Uh, I sort of like to think that I was the one who started that conversation on Skype last night, but my dumbass fell asleep before I was able to be in the video. But <laughs> in other words, let's just get my side of the story here. Uh, if, you, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that. Uh, I sort of have been taking a break from TNA. I uh, sort of didn't like the way that they were booking their, their shows in a way. I think that they were trying to be anti-PG as the WWE is. And I'm the first guy to admit that says that I am not the biggest fan of the PG era on WWE. But one night in TNA made me feel like, I guess, I guess being PG is not that bad. Uh, in my house, I'll just recap real fast. I got I got two little kids that they like to run around, and yeah, I like to watch wrestling when I'm doing other things. Then, so I'll have the TV on when I'm coloring or you know building blocks, and that's not how everybody lives their life. That it's how I live my life. And uh, I don't know how long ago it was. It was about a month ago. Mr. Anderson was in the ring. He was a great character, a great wrestler. I loved him in WWE when he first came to TNA. I was excited to see him. Um, I think he can really help out what they were doing, and they were turning him. From a, a face, or they're turning him from a heel into a face with with uh, um, Jeff Hardy in the ring, which which could work out. But I mean, that's what sort of killed off his character in WWE. But they can do you know whatever they want to with him as long as long as they use him. I can see him on TV. You know, even when, when he was a face in WWE, I still liked his his, his ring work. Um, but I don't know the way they decided to turn him was him calling himself and all of his fans an asshole. And I swear, in a matter of like three minutes. He said asshole like 105 times. And then that, that time I just turned it off. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll take a break from TNA and I'll give it, I'll give it a break whenever I start hearing some, uh, some good things come out of it. And um, when this ECW invasion angle uh, was hatched, I mean, it's been in the dirt sheets for at least a couple of months now that they were putting this together. Uh, the, the, they were trying to bring Heyman in. They were signing a lot of the guys. They were keeping a lot of the ECW guys around. Uh, you saw you saw Raven popping up on TV, and um, I got sort of excited, and uh, and like it, it it sort of felt good. But then, in one night, they sort of killed this angle off before it even got started. When they decided that they were going to push this as their pay per view, uh, Tommy Dreamer, who is uh, I don't I don't want to say he's one of my favorite wrestlers, but just like it's like I say about the Hurricane, he's one of my favorite characters. He's he's a guy that can take anything. Um, he, he rode through ECW. I believe he was the heart and soul of, of ECW uh, in the day. I mean, he, um, I mean, the guy just doesn't quit. He, he, can, he can take anything in the ring, and he's going to give you 100%. 100%. Um, as, as far as I can remember, he's never been hurt, uh, hurt enough to take time off. I mean, he's always been there, no, ma no matter what his body's going through. Um, but... Also, on the other side, we also know he's a real emotional dude, but by trying to, you know, to revive ECW and get your fans, like, pumped up to be something, why is he cutting a promo in the middle of the ring, you know, just bawling out in tears, hugging the owner of TNA, Dixie Carter, and, and, and sort of like, that's supposed to pump us up? I mean, in ECW, I mean, I mean, Tommy Dreamer would have grabbed a cane and beat the crap out of Dixie Carter. Somebody would have, uh, you know, took him over their knee, pulled her skirt up, and spanked the crap out of her. You know, you know when I think of uh, ECW, this is not the, uh, you know, the way of extreme uh, that it's supposed to be. You know, you know when you, I'm sure when you close your eyes and you think of ECW the way it is, or you pop a tape in, you want to see the Dudleys, you want to see RBD, uh, you want to see Raven, Tommy Dreamer. Um, you know, if you want to see the little guys that they push, like Tajiri. Um, I mean, there was there was just uh, a whole lot going on back in the day, and I don't understand. I mean, Tommy Dreamer was in um, was in the WWE, like he like you said, he had a cushy job that he didn't want to let go. But I mean, he already lost a retirement match in WWE on ECW, ECW, and and when he did that, they gave him free reign to say whatever he wanted to say. They didn't give him a skip scripted promo. He came out, he said he loved this time there, uh, he really appreciated it, but now he gets on TNA and now he dogs him? Tommy Dreamer, I don't know what the hell we're supposed to believe about you. It, it, it's just crazy, but um, t to me, this pay-per-view is dead in the water before it even gets started. Um, this is going to be no one-night stand. 
I mean, even if they bring back the guys they want to bring back, it's been done when these guys were younger, when they were already old. And um, I just I don't understand what TNA is going to give this. Let's say TNA shoots through the moon with this pay-per-view. Extreme hard justice or hardcore justice, whatever it's called. And let's say it gets a million buys. A million people buy this pay-per-view. They make a lot of money on it. They sell t-shirts. All the ECW. Anybody who ever watched ECW comes back and watches it. Who's going to come back and watch your next pay-per-view? You're not going to push these ECW guys forever. I mean, it's not going to be ECW pay-per-views. You're going to go back to what it is. You're going to go back to, you know, you know Plain Jane with uh, AJ Styles and Jay Lethal. Uh, you're going to have, you know, RBD is probably still going to be your champ. You're going to have um, Abyss. You're going to have Jeff Hardy. I mean, it's just going to go back to the Plain Jane is what it is. It, I mean... It might spike your ratings, but the thing that's going to kill you is your booking. Your booking sucks. You need to look in the mirror, and you need to fix that before you can fix anything else. Stevie Breach, check it out.